Hi guys. Woo! Welcome to the uh, Go Meetup and welcome to Big Town. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I'm going to talk about the Go template engine. And um, so this talk really requires you to actually know a little bit about Go. So anyone here doesn't know Go at all? Oh, Niraj? Okay. No, sorry. It's okay. So um, you should know a bit about Go, and really you should have actually attended the previous uh, meetup with uh, Jonathan talking about Handler, because originally I wanted to talk about Handlers, but then uh, I saw uh, Jonathan's presentation, it's like, okay, he covered everything that I wanted <coughs> to talk about, so I'm going to jump on to the next thing, which is uh, templates, right? So you have sat through Jonathan's previous presentation, then I think it's a very nice carry-on, I think anyway, uh, to what web application development is all about because uh, there are different components of uh, Go web programming and uh, this is really the middle piece. Right? So the first piece is about handlers and how you do handle the, uh, the request coming in, how you process it. The next part is this, which is really about the templates, how you project and display the uh, information that you process. And then of course the other miscellaneous stuff like uh, accessing, accessing the uh, database and stuff like that. But really these two pieces are the biggest pieces. I try to make it more interesting to talk about the three things you may not know about the Go template engine, assuming that you actually know about the Go template engine, which I'm not sure everybody knows. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about the really obligatory stuff, which really go through very quickly what the web template engine is about. So first thing, what is the template engine? Um, how many here actually work to the template engine? So few. Anyone an uh, example of template engine? Or any template engine, not just Go. Engine. Not just Go, not just Go. Oh, any yeah. template engine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Go is only just one. Okay. <laughs> template engine, yeah. actually close. So um, within, within Go, this is really how it, how it works. You have the client sending a request to the multiplexer, which the handler then handles the stuff, talking to the model, the database. It will send all those things to the template engine to generate the <coughs> content using the templates, and finally it will go back to the client. Right, so this is where it is. Uh, and this middle part here is what I'm going to talk about today. Right, this, this middle part. It's supposed to be orange color, it doesn't come out too much. Deep. So a template engine essentially does this. It takes data, it takes the templates, it merges it together, and then sends out as content right, to be displayed, however it is. Um, and in Go template engines, they are really like uh, two, I mean, in template engines, they are really like, not really, but almost like two camps. One is what they call a logicless templates, which is like mustache, uh, handlebars, right? So you try as much as possible, or try completely not to put any logic at all into your templates. But the other extreme is, of course, um, like JSP, Haml, J, PHP, right? It's the other extreme is like dump all your logic in there. Like JSP, there's, a PHP is basically all the arrays, right? Everything is in the template itself. So where does Go template engine decide this? Somewhat closer to the logicless end, but it's not truly logicless. Um, in fact, as I dive into it, I think you will see a little bit of what I mean. It looks a little bit like logicless templates because of the curly brackets, you might be tempted to think that, oh, I'm familiar with that, that's mustache, right? Or the C templates, but actually it's not, it's actually uh, much more deeper in, than that. So, <clears throat> how does the Go template engine work and what really is the Go template engine? The Go template engine is essentially just these two libraries, text template and uh, HTML template, right? So HTML template derives from text template. Text template basically contains almost everything that you need. And the HTML template contains those things that are very specific to HTML. Okay. Um, and for the template engine, there are two, two parts of it. The first part of it is something you need to put into the handler. So what do you do into the handler? Uh, you, do two, you put two pieces of things. The first part of it is really to pass the template, or whether the template is a string, or the template is a uh, file. 
So you pass the template. The second part of it is you need to execute the template. Right? So it's just these two things. You pass it and then you execute it. The second part of uh, the template engine is the template files or the template itself. And the template <coughs> in the simplest form is something like this. <coughs> can, you, can you see this? Okay. So um, this is HTML. And what you have is uh, double curly brackets, start and double curly brackets, and name dot in between. Right? So this, <coughs> this dot looks very harmless and looks very simple, right? It's actually quite complicated. Um, it's one of the most important things that you need to think about uh, in a template, um, sorry, in a Go template, <coughs> because that basically contains the data that is passed from the handler to the <coughs> template. Right? So if you, you use a, so the Ruby is here, you can say, you will use uh, Rails or use Sinatra, you have a um, instance variable, right? You put an at, and then that instance variable is passed on to your templates. So here, you don't pass on anything at all. The only thing that you pass on, whatever you want to pass on to the template is the dot. So everything, the whole universe is actually in the dot. Right? Everything you want to pass on to the templates is in the dot. And whatever you do next with it is basically you, you uh, manipulate the dot. Yeah. So let's look at some code. <clears throat> Uh, this is the handler, <coughs> and uh, say you have a handler called process. So these are two parts of it. First, you pass the template. This is one form of passing. So you're actually passing a file here. But you can also pass strings. You can pass anything, basically. Uh, but pass files. And then after that, you execute it. So you execute, you pass on the writer, which is basically the response, uh, which is the response writer. And you pass on the data that you want to pass on the template. Right? In this case, I pass on a string, hello world. But other cases, you could pass on a strut, where you can contain all your data. You can pass on a map, you can pass on a whatever, right? Uh, slides, whatever you want to pass on. Okay, so that's the <coughs> basics of the Go template. It seems very simple. It's like, okay, you pass, you execute, you get data, you throw it to the template. Everything is in a dot. What else is there? So it's actually quite a bit of stuff, and um, at least in my opinion, I think the uh, Go template engine is kind of cool, because it doesn't actually do what you think it actually does, and I'm going to talk about three things which I think is pretty <coughs> interesting. Um, you might already know it if you have, Jonathan probably knows it, but um, these are some things I don't see often or I don't see at all in other uh, template engines. Okay, so the first <coughs> is pipelines okay so what I mean by pipeline you just now you saw um, dot right it's only a dot but actually it's more than a dot you can actually do stuff like this yeah so you can have let's say p1 is a dot or whatever variable you, you can have here you can pipeline it to p2 so the output of p1 goes into p2 and output of p2 goes into p3 and it's processed in the pipeline right so let me show you an example in HTML, so let's say I have this. This is a constant, of course. This is uh, an example, but let's say I have constant uh, one, two, dot, three, four, five, six, and uh, I type it to printf, and then I have the uh, printf string. Right? This will generate one twelve point three five. Yeah. So you get your pipeline, the output from one to the next, and to the next, to the next, to the next. Right? So pipeline. Any other web template engine you've seen with pipelines? Angular. Angular has pipelines? I don't know the symbol, but uh, I, I do remember um, yeah, acting yeah. upon the value. Okay, has filters. Yeah, filters, exactly. Filters? Yeah. But syntax might not be the same. Syntax is not the same. <coughs> yeah, but it's similar. It's similar? It's kind of cool. Yes, Kai. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the second thing is functions. Um, functions in Go template thing, it's a, it's a little bit cumbersome, but it actually is again very uh, powerful. Right? So let me just give an example here. Again, you have a function. You just said you find a, let's say you want to format the date that you want to format, right? Accordingly, um, you create a function called format date, and then 
as you before you actually uh, pass the file and execute it, what you do is you add <coughs> the uh, the function, you give it a name, label update, and then uh, set it as a, a function using the the func map function. Uh, sorry, the func uh, function, and then you <coughs> pass the file as per normal and you execute it. Right. Uh, inside your template, you can now use can now use the uh, update. <coughs> Basically, what you've done is you've created a function and you pass it on to the template. Right? Um, of course, it looks a bit cumbersome. Wow, do I, every, every handler, do I need to create my own function and then just add it in, right? So, well, you can if you want, but you can also put like uh, some utilities to automatically create a funk map and so on, like before you add it in. So this is uh, the method of the way how you use to update the dot, so basically you are uh, formatting the date for the dot. Right? Um, that's one way of doing it. Of course, the other way is yeah, you dot, and then you pipe it to the update. Right? And the update, it comes out with something else, can pipe it to something else. You can come up with, with different variations of it. Um, so, second interesting thing, I think about the um, Go template engine is the functions. The third part. Well, once you don't have the dot, it just fails. The dot? Once you don't have the dot, just the function. Just the function? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. It's an error. Just not passing, you're not passing a parameter to the function. Of course, if your function does not take any parameters, that's fine. But if your function takes a parameter, then it doesn't work. Right. I thought that if they didn't have the arguments. It did. Format date. Oh, okay, but the, the, the argument is taken as time now. Oh, which is the dot? Which is the dot. Yeah. Oh. This, this is the dot. Oh, okay. So you're passing time dot now. Could you go, that goes to make it a bit clearer, could you go f date uh, time dot now in your template? Or you can, you can. You can. I mean, I'm just doing this to show like uh, you can type it. <coughs> Or you can put in any other data in. So I think one frequent use is really you um, put in stuff in a strut and then you pass a strut as a dot and then within the strut you can actually use the different parts of the strut. It's, it's more common. Uh, so there's an update, update. <coughs> the third thing about Go Web Templates is being context aware. And uh, what do I mean by that? So. Um, when you display the content on a web page, according to where you place it, the formatting of the data changes. Right, so it is context aware. It is aware of where you are placing the data. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the code example. I arbitrarily use this, uh, so this, this is basically a string. I ask what's up, right? So you have angular brackets, you have uh, double quotes, you have single quote, you have question mark, you have, you have a colon, right? So it's a test. Now I'll put it in this, I'll put a dot here. Within this, I put a dot in the hashref. Um, I put a dot when uh, uh, Q equals two, and I put a dot under as a JavaScript function. Right, let's see how it comes out. So this is how it comes out. As you can see, all of them are different. <coughs> it depends on where you actually put the data, it comes out differently. Okay, so this is a bit messy. Let's just show you a table. Uh, the original text is here. And um, you just put it with a normal div. It converts all the angular brackets into uh, ampersand LT semicolon and so on, right? You, what's that called? Uh, HTML entities. HTML entities, um, they call it URL encode. Oh, okay. Okay. You put it within the second right? one is the URL encode. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> First one is not. First one is what we call it. Escaping. Escaping. Uh, escaping. HTML escaping. <coughs> um, you put it in the hashtag and you put it with the, as a, um, what's called that? Curry, curry, string. Uh, curry string, yeah. And it changes as well. And you put it as JavaScript, it's a little different, right? 
So it changes according to where you put it. And uh, I've not actually seen any other web template that does this, though I could be wrong. You know? so this is something I thought is pretty cool. But why would you want to do that? Isn't that kind of crazy thing to do? So obviously, this is a reason, right? Because um, this is a very obvious reason. There are other reasons, but uh, this is a very obvious reason. And uh, for this, I actually want to show you a demo. Right. So let me show you the code first, which you hopefully can see. Okay, you just ignore this too. Right? Um, if I do this here, and I output this here. Yes. Sorry. Um, so if I put this right, so, and I have a form that submits. Um, I have a form that um, that does this, and uh, I have an in input that enters some script in it, right? <coughs> so normally you should come up with. I mean, if you didn't protect it properly, then you will actually throw a JavaScript alert. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, let me start this. And uh, but. In this case, what happens is that it converts it into this, right? So what happens is basically converts the angular brackets and everything uh, accordingly, and then it just turns out into a normal string uh, displayed on the browser. Of course, you can actually escape this. So what happens if we don't do this? So the other thing is you can, uh, you can remove this, you remove the access protection, and you put template.html, basically you say, look, this is new <laughs> HTML. Like, don't convert it. Uh, you build it up again. Right. So this time, oops. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Technical problem. I did not save the file. Okay, let me compile it again. So, it comes out. Uh, the script actually comes out, right? Uh, this one should have So that was an example of how you would possibly use it. In fact, the thing about it is you don't actually need to use it because by default it <coughs> protects you from this kind of attacks. You can actually escape it if you want to, but then you actually need to explicitly do it. Right, so that was a demo. And uh, I'll end off with a sales pitch. <laughs> So this is my new book, um, Go Web Programming. Uh, this is actually extracted from one of the chapters in my book. Um, and I'm halfway through writing it, but it is already in uh, early access. If you want to have, uh, you want to get the early access, you <coughs> can use this discount code and give you 50%. Right. So, yeah. five zero. You are aiming to finish this by August? Uh, so I should finish writing around okay. July. And it should come out around August, September. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit faster. I've been pushed like crazy by the publisher. Like, <laughs> Go is hot. You need to deliver it soon. Like, so it has to beat the competition. Like, <laughs> spending all my nights and weekends doing it. <laughs> okay, so that's it for my talk. Thank you. This is my email and my Twitter handle. Thank you. <laughs>